In this module, we will discuss in detail about the Domer's model of economic growth. Yves Domer published his work on capital expansion and growth in 1946, seven years later than a similar work by Roy Harrod. Although there are many similarities in conclusions of two models by Domer and Harrod, but there are some very important differences in the two models. After studying this module, you shall be able to know about the basic of Domer's model of economic growth, learn about the structure of the Domer's model, understand the working of Domer's model and analyze the comparison between the Harrod and Domer's model. Now let us begin our discussion about Domer's model of economic growth. Domer's starting point was to criticize Keynesian framework for its incompleteness in addressing two important issues related to the long run. Number one, Keynesian analysis considers investment only to be an income generating, that is on the demand side instrument through the multiplier while ignoring the essential productive capacity changing that is the supply side or the role of investment. It is precisely because of this reason that Keynes assumed that employment of labor is a function of national income. But Domer points out that this is true only in the short run. He assumes that over time employment of labor is a function of ratio of national income to the productive capacity. The second important point is that Keynesian analysis while giving more importance to the need of full employment of labor almost ignores the issue of unemployment of capital which in turn becomes the source of labor employment. According to Domer, it is the premature obsolescence of capital equipment that discourages investment and growth thereby causing the labor unemployment. Now let us know the main assumption of the Domer's model. Number one, savings and investment refer to income of the same period. Number two, both saving and investment are net that is over and above the depreciation. Number three, depreciation is measured not in respect of historical cost of the depreciated equipment but in respect to the cost of replacement of the depreciated asset by another one of the same productive capacity. The latter cost may be different from the former owing to the technological progress. Number four, there is a constant general level of prices. Number five, no adjustment lags are present in the market. Number six, productive capacity of an asset or of the entire economy can be measured. This assumption is very strong since the productive capacity of a given physical stock of capital does not depend just upon the technical factors but economic and institutional factors as well. For example, distribution of income, preferences of consumers, wage rate, relative prices and structure of industry etc. Number seven, average and marginal propensity to save are equal for the economy. Number eight, the ratio of productive capacity of capital to the size of capital for the entire economy is equal to that of the new investment projects. It means nothing but that average potential output to capital ratio is equal to the marginal potential output capital ratio. Number nine, employment rate depends upon the ratio of actual output and productive capacity also known as the utilization ratio. Next, we shall discuss the structure of Domer's model. The first important feature of this model is that national income or output is determined by investment through the multiplier as per this relationship. That is, yt is equal to it upon s, where s, which is assumed to be constant, is the marginal propensity to save. The second one is the productive capacity of an economy or the capital stock is defined by Domer as its output when the entire labor force is fully employed in some conventional sense. Number three, for the new investment projects, the ratio of potential productive capacity created by these new investment projects 
to the size of capital invested in them that is i is denoted by nu domer in his original work had used a different symbol through nu is equal to dp upon dk using assumption 8 we can write nu is equal to p upon k which is equal to dp upon dk number 4 the addition in potential product equity of the entire economy's capital stock may be less than the potential product equity of just the new investment projects this is because operation of new projects may involve transfer of scarce labor from older projects making the latter less productive and thereby increasing the overall product equity of the economy due to new investment less than the potential the ratio of change in productive capacity of the economy due to new investment to the amount of investment is termed by domer as the potential social average investment productivity and is denoted by sigma therefore sigma is equal to dp upon dt divided by i where p stands for the productive capacity of the economy the fifth feature is that domer assigns the following characteristics to sigma number 1 its magnitude depends upon the technological progress as embodied in new investment projects thus we can say that sigma refers to increase in capacity which accompanies rather than caused by investment number 2 sigma refers to increase in potential capacity to supply its realization depends upon the presence of adequate demand for it number 3 the maximum value which sigma can attain is equal to nu the shortfall would depend upon the magnitude of the rate of investment growth of labor force and natural resources technological progress misdirection of investment etc therefore sigma is less than equal to n number 4 it is assumed by domer that sigma and n remain constant the sixth feature of domer model is when sigma is less than n then following an investment i new projects with productive capacity of i into n are built the productive capacity of entire economy however increases only by i into sigma which is less than i n this implies that somewhere in the economy not excluding new projects because of misdirection of investment productive capacity must be reduced by i n minus i c but since domer has assumed in assumption number 8 that the ratio of productive capacity of capital to the size of capital for the entire economy is constant at new therefore every year an amount of capital or the capital value equal to i into new minus sigma divided by new becomes useless such an untimely or unintended demise of capital equipment over and above depreciation is termed by domer as junking junking of capital is a result of unprofitability of old type of capital asset which in turn may be caused by either shortages in supply of labor or loss of demand of produce because of lower cost and better quality of newer products the seventh feature is the incentives for investment are provided by the rate of growth of output and hurt by the amount of junking we may write that delta i upon i is function of delta y upon y which has a positive influence and this is also a function of nu minus sigma divided by nu which would be having a negative influence the increase in proportion of capital junked negatively affects a business confidence thereby reducing the rate of investment now we will discuss the working of the domers model the question herod asks is that what must be the rate of growth of investment if the increase in productive capacity due to change in capital stock is to be exactly matched by the increase in output due to change in demand for investment so that the economy always remains in full employment of labor equilibrium over time rewriting equation 
gives us the rate of change of productive capacity which is dp upon dt which is equal to i into sigma. Note that productive capacity increases so long as the net investment and the potential social average investment productivity are positive. The rate of growth of output is obtained by differentiating equation 1 with respect to time which is given like this dy upon dt is equal to di upon dt multiplied by 1 upon s. For simplification Domer assumes that the economy is in equilibrium to begin with that is p0 is equal to y0. The equilibrium condition then is that change in productive capacity equals change in output that is dp upon dt is equal to dy upon dt. Now substituting from 3 and 4 we obtain the equilibrium condition in this way 1 upon i multiplied by di upon dt is equal to s into sigma. This condition implies that equilibrium over time requires investment to grow at a constant and continuous rate which is equal to s into sigma. Equation 1, 5 and 6 together imply that 1 upon y multiplied by dy upon dt is equal to 1 upon i multiplied by di upon dt. This implies that output grows at the same rate as investment that is s into sigma. If the economy fails to grow at the warranted rate then the capacity will be underutilized implying less than full employment of labor as well as capital. Now notice the similarity between the expression of the warranted or required rate of growth of Domer and that of Herod. The warranted rate of Herod is S upon CR where CR is reciprocal of the marginal capital output ratio. Now we will move on to understand the stability of equilibrium in Domer's model. Domer only considers the question of downward stability of his equilibrium although not explicitly. According to Domer even in the situation of no junking if the investment ever fails to grow at the warranted rate then the economy would progress towards depression because investors would further reduce the rate of investment following dwelt unused capacity due to fall of output below productive capacity. The situation becomes even grimmer in the case of junking. Under this situation the business confidence would be negatively affected despite the fact the economy is on the equilibrium path that is p is equal to 1. This owes to be junking of capital following new investments. Junking that is unused capital stock due to shortfall in the labor force or demand or both leads to lack of desire to invest further and thereby a reduction in rate of investment below the warranted rate of growth even when the economy started with the latter rate of growth. One way Domer points out that in which entrepreneur will react to a high unused capacity would be by decreasing the real wage rates and thereby increasing their share of profits. However, this move since capitalists have a higher saving rate than the rest would lead to increase in savings rate of the economy as a whole and thus the warranted rate of growth making it even more difficult to achieve the warranted rate and thereby further building of excess capacity. Now we can discuss about the conclusions of the Demers model. Without junking or unwanted scraping of capital, the income, investment, productive capacity and capital stock can grow at the warranted rate of growth S into sigma ensuring the full employment of both labor and capital. Secondly, with junking of capital every year the economy would move towards acute depression. Thirdly, it is the unused capital equipment that endangers the attainment of full employment equilibrium in the economy. Now let us look into the comparison between Harrods and Domer's model. As we have discussed the two models are similar in many ways. Number one, for both the economists the started point is to make 
the Keynesian framework dynamic. Number two, both have assumed to some extent the constancy of capital output ratio that is CR in case of Harrod and its inverse the related capital output ratio that is sigma in case of Dover. Number three, both obtain constant growth paths. Number four, both assume that output follows demand thereby implying that output can fall below potential leading to entrepreneurial reaction of change in rate of investment. Number five, both conclude a grimmer future if ever the economy diverges from its unstable equilibrium path. Although similar on many broad counts, the two differences in model can be summarized in this way. The first issue is that of key concept. Domer has stated that rate of growth which equate output to productive capacity ensuring full employment of labor but if junking is present it is possible with less than full employment of capital. While in Harrod model equilibrium rate of growth for entrepreneurs which requires full employment of capital but is compatible with less than full employment of labor. The second issue is related with long run problem. In case of Domer model, junking of capital, decreasing the rate of investment below the warranted, while in case of Harrod model, labor shortage not allowing economy to such warranted rate of growth. The third issue is related with feature of the economy. In Domer model, we talk about unused capacity. In Harrod model, we talk about less than full employment of labor. The fourth issue is that of role of labor. In Harrod model, shortages lead to junking of capital and thus negatively affect the rate of investment. While in Harrod model, it determines the natural rate of growth, which is a cap on the rate of growth an economy can achieve. The fifth issue is that of causes of instability. In Harrod model, continuously decreasing investment incentive due to increasing used capacity. While in Harrod's model, process of adjustment which results in expected rate of growth diverge further and further from the warranted rate of growth. The sixth issue is related with causes of fixed capital output ratio. While Domer has taken the simplification assumption, but the Harrod model talks about fixed relative rate of interest and thus fixed capital labor ratio combined with CRS. Now let us summarize what we have discussed in this module. Keynesian analysis considers investment only to be an income generating that is from demand side instrument through the multiplier while ignoring the essential productive capacity changing that is from the supply side the role of investment. Keynesian analysis while giving over importance to the need of full employment of labor almost ignores the issue of unemployment of capital which in turn becomes the source of labor unemployment. Productive capacity of an economy or say the capital stock is defined by Domer as its output when the entire labor force is fully employed in some conventional sense. The ratio of change in productive capacity of the economy due to new investment to the amount of investment is termed by Domer as the potential social average investment productivity and is denoted by sigma. The incentives for investment are provided by the rate of growth of output and hurt by the amount of junking. That is delta i upon i is a function of delta y upon y which is a positive function and nu minus sigma divided by nu which is a negative function. The increase in proportion of capital junked negatively affects the business confidence thereby reducing the rate of investment. Without junking or unwanted scraping of capital the income, investment, productive capacity and capital stock can grow at warranted rate of growth that is S into sigma ensuring the full employment of both labor and capital. With junking of capital every year the economy would move towards 
acute depression. It is the unused capital equipment that endangers the attainment of full employment equilibrium in the economy. That's all with this module. Thank you.